when you climb, <sighs> like for anybody who climbs Mount Everest, don't you just like climb past like skeletal yes. remains? Like yeah, yeah, they leave the bodies. Yeah, you climb past them, they, and they're white because like they're 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 basically just completely frozen solid, and and it's just like a white piece of meat and then the the clothing is like ripped apart so you can see the flesh underneath it it's hard as a rock it's like so when it's frozen all year round it never thaws never thaws wow yeah you're just up there frozen like a rock forever yeah and they leave the bodies there because it's too dangerous to bring them back like they've there's a lot of people that are like there's a dead guy that you pass by i mean these people that are up there doing it like look at that guy whoa yeah died there's 200 bodies up there jesus at least they haven't they don't know the official number oh over 300 people mother have died fucker. To do it. how many people die climbing everest every year over 300 total have died so i don't know about every year mm. 311 i said it's just said is the uh they die every year though you know what's fascinating to me is how like deliberate people are to avoid contemplating their own mortality Mm, this is a weird one. The, the Everest one's a weird one. Because it's also, it's like, I mean, I, I admire people that want to take challenges on and, and do things that are very difficult because I, I'm just guessing that the sense of accomplishment after you do it is probably pretty extraordinary. But <laughs> the other hand, like, fuck, man, you're passing by people who didn't make it. Right. You know, two climbers found a woman alone and dying, yelling, please don't leave me. But were forced to continue and let her die as they had no means to help her and staying would risk their own lives. They felt so guilty. They spent years saving up enough money to finally return and give her a proper burial. Oh, my God. So what, what, made, what made them able to hang out with her the second oh time? Oh, my God. I know, right? <laughs> oh, hey, there's that lady that we didn't save. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> It's so crazy. Yeah, I, I read the story about this woman who climbed Mount Everest because she wanted to prove that um, being a vegan didn't make you weak, <laughs> and she died. It, it, yeah, it's there's nuts. another one. Look at that body. Fuck that. Frozen, pale, white. The bo scroll back. The body was named Green Boots, perhaps the most well-known body on Everest. His real name was Sway, Swang Pajor. He died during the 1996 Mount Everest disaster. While descending from the summit, he was trapped in a blizzard and died due to exposure. Um, is there another mountain that people die like crazy? They die on K2. Yeah, K2 kills a lot of people. And then there's other mountains where, where like, that's one of the things they covered in the Alpinist, where like a quarter of the people who try to summit it die. <laughs> Man. Yeah, these pe fucking people, man. They just, they look at this, 29% fatality rate, more than a quarter. The main peak of Annapurna Massif is the most dangerous of the world's mountains with a 29% fatality rate of everyone who tries to climb it. Since 1900, an estimated 244 expeditions have resulted in 72 deaths. Fuck. And the next most dangerous... Uh, Kang Chen Juana with a slightly higher death rate. Twenty nine point one percent death rate. Yes, yeah, twenty nine percent. K two almost as dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Everest. Everest, by contrast, is a four percent fatality rate. So Everest is for pussies. Still four percent. Yeah. You go up with a hundred people, four of them are going to die. Right. I think that um, I, I think that uh, so many people are just hyper focused on not like contemplating their mortality. Mm -hmm. That like that they they fail to live deliberately like while they're alive. There's that there's an argument for that. Yeah, there's people that don't want to take any risks at all. Right. Now, listen, I, listen, I certainly take risks. I'm I mean, not suggesting that that you that you should take risks or, or or anything like that. I just think that by 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 living with your blinders on, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I have this theory that uh, you know, particularly in in Western civilization, like like uh, America, like where, where we live, like actually being old is like a fucking party foul. 
You know, people don't want to like pe- people want to take elderly folks and just shuttle them into a nursing home and not deal with them, not look at them. Like it's it, it, it like old people serve as a reminder of your mortality and it just bums people out like being old is a party foul well there's that but there's also people can't take care of people they don't have the ability if you're working full time and you have a career and a family and your father is unable to take care of himself anymore you're left with a limited amount of options like what are you going to do are you going to abandon your life for the next 10 years so that you can take care of this person 24 hours a day or are you going to put him in some sort of a medical facility? Right. But then the big fear is that he gets abused there. That is the saddest, scariest shit when you, you see those videos yeah. of people getting abused in nursing homes, like hidden camera footage of oh, the last days of your life. Some young asshole is fucking smacking you in the head and shoving your face in food. I haven't seen any of those videos. Oh, I'm glad those are I have horrible. Not. They're horrible. And yeah, and, and maybe it's not about putting people in nursing homes, but I just think that there's a real, like, a, a real, like, like living with the blinders on, like, like I don't want to think about it, la, 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 la. And then you end up, you know, further down the road thinking, like, oh, man, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? As opposed to really, like, being deliberate and and... and living the life you would want to have lived when it's coming to an end. Well, I think it's also a learned thing to be able to take chances. And if you go through your life and you get to, maybe you have a family and your family is uh, your mother and your father are averse to risks and they play everything safe and then they drill it into your head to play it safe and then all of a sudden you're 35, you don't know how to do anything risky. Right. This is like the life you've always lived. I mean, there's how many people that just live this sedentary lifestyle and they're just gelatinous blobs sitting in a <laughs> chair every day right. and trying to avoid risk. And by the way, those are the people that freaked out the most when COVID came along right. because they were really like genuinely vulnerable. Whereas, yeah. you know, if you're an athlete and you're relatively healthy, that was not something you were as terrified of. And those people got mad at those people that weren't terrified because for them, it was literally like there was a demon waiting to get them because they were scared.